I used to have a buddy who was crazy. I loved him with all my heart. Rest in peace. <laughs> His name was Darren Rago. And he was a garbage man for a while. Uh-huh. So we found out what his root was, right? So me and my buddies <laughs> would, go, oh, no. would go on his roots. You know those metal garbage cans? Yeah. We would put brick in them. <laughs> we would put blocks in there, an eight-inch brick, yeah. and put like a garbage bag over it, and we'd sit with binoculars and watch him jump off the truck at five in the morning. <laughs> you know, like fucking Johnny Muscles. And he's just picking up garbage cans and emptying them. This is before the machine. Yeah, like, but they had to get out of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is where two idiots. They hang on the back. On the back. Uh huh. And then they look in front of your house, and the best is like in Jersey. They come out, and you have a couch, and they're like, "We won't take couches. You give them twenty bucks, they throw the fucking couch in there. They don't give a fuck. Bro. Yeah. And it mashes it. But so we would do this guy. <laughs> this guy was a bodybuilder. <laughs> so we get all coked up, and we go. Let's. It's four thirty. What time does Ray go? Take that garbage. And he's like, ah, oh, five thirty-six. So we would go to a garbage can, fill it up with bricks, and then take the garbage can across the street because we didn't know what side he was going to be on. Okay. We didn't know what's, so he'd jump off the thing, start <laughs> fucking <laughs> emptying shit, and then get the one garbage can and go to pick it up. And it's like, and he'd yell, fuck! Because he knew it was us. <laughs> At first, he didn't know. We would do this to him like every week. Just set up garbage cans. Just put weights in it, <laughs> blocks, fucking bottles, and he would come up and you'd see him pulling, and he's like, "Fuck!" And then we would ask him questions. <laughs> he's gonna like, break his back. Oh my god, we would ask him questions. How is work? Ah, some motherfuckers on Seventy Sixth Street put fucking heavy shit in there. He didn't know. We would sit there and watch him like all coked up, and then he figured out it was us. What would you put in there? Like Bro, weights? We drive. Like let's say we had to drive to fucking Lee's. Like on the way there, we're okay. Like stop by that construction site. Let's steal some fucking <laughs> blocks and some eight-inch brick, and we go by your house and put barbells in there, like a forty-five-pound weight. Oh my God. And he'd come and try to like he'd be walking down the street, like whistling Dixie. Yeah. And he'd go to pick up that garbage can. It would be like two hundred fucking pounds, and he would get <laughs> pissed. He'd have to drag it. And then the other guy would have to help, and then they would empty it, and they'd see the bricks. Oh and they're like, God. motherfuckers, somebody's <laughs> doing this to us on purpose. We did this for about six months before he caught on. He would come out, and he would be pissed. Somebody keeps fucking with me. I'm going to find them and fuck them up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. There's nothing You're like... You're giving people ideas right now. <laughs> there's nothing like, oh, my God. Dog, when we were kids... Some like, states still do it like that. The other night I was watching, oh my God, the worst movie of all time, uh, the Iceman movie. Oh, yeah. With it's, Michael Shannon? Yeah, it's god awful. I've never seen it. It's god awful. You know, and I know that whole story. But the guy that plays the ice cream man in there, that's what we used to, he used to live on a street called Charles Court. Uh huh. I mean, and it was the darkest side of the street. There was a street light. So the darkest sides of the street, Charles Court was a circle. It's like, what do you call those? Cul-de-sac. A cul-de-sac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a little island in the middle. Like a roundabout? Right, but very small. It was just a regular block with a little island in the middle that had two houses. So when you would go up the corner and you would go this way, there would be lights. But once you got to over here, it was very dark. Huh. And then there was a street light over here. And once you went down about 20 more yards, it was pitch dark. So what we would do is we wait till the fall, and we get nine blocks, and we built like a brick wall in the middle of the street and put leaves on. So it looked like it was a bundle of leaves. So you're there with your Mustang, and you're like, "Oh shit, look at these leaves!" <laughs> so what we would do is <laughs> we would do two roadblocks. We would get you in front of Prongay's house, and then once you hit the wall and you went it out again, we had. We had another wall down here. So you would actually hit two walls. You would get out of the car and start yelling, you motherfuckers, <laughs> you dirty sons of bitches, and we'd be fucking howling. Quack, 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 quack. Oh, my and God. And that's exactly what we'd do. We had free time as a teenager. We'd fucking put. All these pranks. Oh, no. This was, this was when I was in the eighth grade <laughs> at night. This was eighth grade, seventh grade at night. And then there was a police phone, <laughs> and we ripped that out every night, and the cops would come. How old are you in eighth grade? 12, 13, okay. 14, 
the crew I hung out with there, that's what we did, pranks. <laughs> that's what we did. There was a lady who had a fish tank, like a bowl in front of a house with fish. And we put lighter fluid in there and light it on fire with the fish. Jesus. And, and she'd come out, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> it looked like one of those zombies at a fucking Chinese bar. <laughs> <laughs> we lit that on fire for like a month. And it happened until she just took the water oh out. My God. We killed like a thousand fish. We killed, we killed more fish than cancer. Like the straws, we would put it. <laughs> dogs, she used to have those big goldfish in there and then lock the door every yeah. night. And we just put lighter fluid up on top. Oh my God, that's Put a, a match in there <laughs> and you can hear the fish. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. Hey, what are you going to do? I was in the eighth grade. Yeah. I was a dumb kid. Oh, I'm sweating. That's what we do. And then we'd run down the block and there was like a fucking thing. And then there was a guy that did ceramics. And he would sit at his house watching TV and we'd throw rocks at the window. <laughs> then when he'd come out, we'd throw eggs at him and shit. Fuck you, mother. I mean, this was constant. Yeah. That street down there, you knew <laughs> if you didn't tip, like if you like if we shoveled your driveway and you didn't tip, you were done on Halloween. <laughs> you know how many garbage cans we let on fire? <laughs> Today, my wife got out yesterday because my daughter, we had to get a bicycle. Not for me. But I'm going to ride it. My wife got like a used, whatever the fuck you call it, like a. Uh, Mountain bike? No, the other ones, the beach combers. Oh, like a cruiser? Yeah, my wife said some lady had it for 35 bucks to offer it to her. You know what's funny? Skip. I bought a used bike yesterday, yeah, too. Yeah, she bought a bike. <laughs> so I we were tuning it up today. Uh huh. And I fucking put, you know, stuff on the chain. I tightened the things, I tightened the pedals. And she goes, What are you tightening? And I go, The fucking handlebars. Mm-hmm. And she goes, why are you t-? And I told her the story. I'm going to tell you something. One time, I don't know what I did. I bumped into 100 bucks. And the hottest bike when I was a kid was the Apollo Racer. It had handlebars and the fucking thing in the back. What do you call it? Sissy bar? I don't know. You guys are too young for this. Nobody stood up on it? Yeah, it was yeah. three fucking speeds. It was, see if you see Apollo Racer. I put the picture up of the Agostino. This is the baddest bike in the world. And they gave one away every Sunday on Wonderama. When I was a kid, there was a show called Wonderama on Channel 5. And every, it was from 8 to 11. And on Sundays, they would fucking, they would play Wonderama and you could register to win a bicycle. That was a fucking Apollo. Click on the one of them. You see that? I've seen those. That was yeah, an Apollo race. You see those handlebars? Yeah. So I bought one of those at Sears, Roebuck. And I actually... The guy goes, do you want it to build it for you? And I go, no, no, no. Just give me 10% off and give me the demo. <laughs> guy looks at me like, what the fuck are you talking about? You're a kid. Nobody asked for 10%. Uh, off. I'll give him 10% off and I'll buy the demonstrator. Because I didn't have time for him to build it. So the guy goes, okay, I'll give you whatever you want. I gave him the money, cash, and I got on the bicycle. Now, I lived on a hill. Every hill. was. I had to go down Sears Hill and then down the Chinese Hill, which is fucking like this. <laughs> Lee saw it steep. and went to the Chinese store. Yeah. Fucking <laughs> steep. And then my block is a fucking hill. So I went all the way home on hills. Nothing happened. Oh, the hard part is going back uphill. Yeah. I didn't go too many uphills. <laughs> there wasn't too many uphills on that bike. Everyone, but, you know, those hills, that they, they were keeping me alive today. Walking those hills as a kid. There's a, yeah. there's a, there's a Facebook page called the, the Hills of North Bergen. <laughs> it's a group of guys that talk about what we went through growing up in North Bergen on those hills. There was a hill, 46th Street, that was so steep, there was a cemetery on it. And whenever it rained, it would wash the graves. Uh-huh. And there'd be fucking caskets on the bottom of 46th Street. What? Dee Dee, that kid I was talking about, and Carlos, his older brother, their mother lived on that. It was a dead end. You know how many cars came down that thing and crashed against their house when they were growing up? Wow. They would lose control and just crash. It was a fucking huge hill. Shit. Like two miles momentum. Oh my god! <laughs> and we wow. would walk up that hill backwards, talking with a beer in our hand. <laughs> when we were kids, smoking a joint, it, I just was goofing with my buddies. Like it would take us uh, two, three hours to walk up that hill. Now, I'd have a heart attack if I had to walk up that hill. Now, yeah, we would walk it three times a night. Wow. You had to walk in the morning to get a bus back down, and then at night, if you want to go uptown, you had to walk it again. So we just get liquor and walk up the hill, drinking fucking liquor. So whenever it rained in that neighborhood, the Agostino, the fuck it would wash the graves. I remember first moving there, and people were like, you got to run to 46th Street. There's a guy in a casket. You could see like a skeleton and shit. I was like, what? 
And then later on, I didn't see it, but later on when I started hanging out with those two, I asked him if those stories were true, and he goes, all the fucking time. We've seen caskets, bodies, bones, you know, a lot of, because like, it's an old cemetery. Uh-huh. Like, people were buried in 1830. Oh, wow. 1890, 19, you know, like the the, the lower half. Yeah. Like, it went up as the years okay. went up. Okay. So, the closer it was to your year, you were up the hill. But all those people on the bottom or in the middle were all, like, 1990. I remember taking a shit in there one night in the dead of the winter, and I, I felt guilty. I'm like, I'm shitting on the grave. And I'm like, this guy's got no relatives left. <laughs> it was like a stick, like with a name. Like it was just a stick oh, that there was, man. like the cross was crooked. Like, we... like Jesus had a longer arm than the other one. Like, it... <laughs> like in City Slickers when they buried him right yeah. there. It was fucking <laughs> crazy. Ever... <laughs> so I would take shits in there all the time. I, I couldn't make it home when I was a kid. So I would just, in the summertime, I'd just get three fucking pieces of grass. Oh. Wipe my ass and walk home with a little dirty ass, oh, but geez. just enough to make it home, and there'd be no skin marks on your underwear. You just pull off your pants and you can smell your asshole. It smells dirty. <laughs> <laughs> so what yeah. happened with the handlebars? So I bring the fucking bike home. Yeah. And next door to me, I had this goofy kid, Valentin Farrell, who will not be my friend. He refuses to be my friend. He's a fucking dentist in Kentucky now, one of those places. I found him online. I just went online and pressed his name, and there he was. So, but he won't accept your request, is what you're saying? No, I called his dental office mm. and left a message. I'm like, Tom Coco's on the line, and she's like, he doesn't want to talk to you, sir. Wow. And I'm like, okay. And I fucking thought about it. why wouldn't he want to talk to him? I'm like, I tortured this kid by mistake. Not really. Like every time he hung with me, something bad happened. <laughs> Not because I was a bad person. I loved him. I loved him. He was a fucking grease monkey. He was great. But he was a speed demon. You know, he was one of those kids that builds ramps. Okay. Like, way. Like, as soon as I moved to Jersey, he was my neighbor. Mm-hmm. And he'd always be building. Him and this kid, Michael Clemens, who had fleas. What do you call that when they have... they have Lice? Lice. The whole family had to get crew cuts. Oh. <laughs> so there were two, like, uh, bike junkies. And they lived right next door to each other. So I still, like, there was two incidents, but that one, then we'll get the fuck out of here. When I bought that Apollo Racer, I came home. But six months before the Apollo Racer, I bought a mini bike. Christmas Eve, the the lawnmower ones. Yeah. And he fucking fell off and got stitches and shit because the seat wasn't screwed on. So every time he'd see me, he's like, man, that night fucked me up. I ended up at the hospital on Christmas Eve. So he was okay with me. We were friends, and I loved him to death. But he was, every time he'd see me, when I came home with the bike that day, he's like, hey, that's a fucking cool-ass bike, man. Wow. Because he was like a half a bike thief. <laughs> so if we would steal bikes, we'd bring them to him, and he would change them for us. He'd pop the plate off. He would screw fucking tape it. He'd sand the fucking VIN number down. And oh, then wow. put another one on it. Yeah. Like, he was a fucking chief. So if somebody saw you with the bike and said, hey, man, that's my bike. What are you talking about? Mm-hmm. Look at the VIN. This ain't your bike, and the guy would be looking at his number, looking, oh, it's not my bike. <laughs> Sorry. So we would take a bike. Uh, what's it called when you prime it? You take the old paint off. Yeah. So you put this gray thing on, and it would strip the old paint off down right. to the metal. Then we'd sand it to make it porous, and then we'd paint them. And then we'd paint, like, two or three coats, and we'd put that other shit on it, the Sylvie stuff. So nobody knows who bikes. I mean, hmm. everybody who had a stolen bike brought it to Valentine. So he was considered the neighborhood fucking mechanic. Okay. So I get home one day, and he's like in his window. He's one of those kids that had like the screen window, the window, the <laughs> flea window. Like it was like a storm window. There was yeah. like eight windows. So he would open up all eight of them, <laughs> you know, and pop his head up. What do you got there? Is that an Apollo race? I'm like, yeah. He goes, you mind if I take it for a ride? come down. So he comes down. He's like, man, this is great. Thank you. I always wanted one of these. Go ahead and knock yourself out. Dog, I had no bad malice in my heart. He took the fucking bike up the hill. He even did that thing where you test the wind. <laughs> oh, my God. And I'm sitting there, and I don't know what's going on. I, I go, he's a great kid. He's going to be fine. And he's pedaling, and he got up on the bike. And you know when you get up and you're really pedaling? But the guy didn't tighten the screw for the handlebars. So the handlebars <laughs> basically went straight down. He's looking at me like, what the fuck is this? And all I seen him was hit something, and his body just fly off the bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> and then his mother oh. took him to the hospital. Oh, man. Oh. 
And he hadn't talked to you since that time? No. Oh. Then there was then we became we were, we were still friends and we got older. We had him drinking and smoking dope. He was a great kid. Big kid, tough kid. And one night we started lighting fires in the woods. We were like 13, 14. I had to be 13. We would light fires in the woods. And every night you would show up with something. So you'd show up with a piece of paper to contribute to the fire. <laughs> Or a piece of wood, or a little bit of gasoline, a little bit of liquid, you know, uh, lighter fluid. Lighter fluid. Yeah, yeah. Not him. Guess what this motherfucker shows up with? <laughs> An industrial can of Lysol. <laughs> like the big, big, yeah. this is 1970, when they were big and thick. <laughs> and we already had the fire going. The fire was already going. He showed up late. He's like, look what I got. We're like, what the fuck is that? What are you going to do, spray it? Because a lot of people would spray that. Yeah, you can make a fire up. mist. But he throws no, the whole can on there? He threw the whole can oh. in that motherfucker. And we're like, what's going to happen? He's like, I don't know. Oh. Somebody told me it blows up loud or something. And we're standing there like, yeah, ha, 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 ha. Oh. And just like, boom. And dog, I don't know what it was. It was like slow motion. I was kind of looking at the, you know how like when you look at a fire, you get intrigued sometimes? Yeah. I saw the thing explode. And the bottom of the can, you know how it has the opal? Uh-huh. That, that little bump in the thing? Yeah. I saw that thing fly right off. And I, it was like something out of a fucking movie. So this is the bottom of it? Yeah. And it flew off and went. He had jeans on. Dog. Right to him, too. Went right through the fucking jeans. Uh. You could smell the skin. And he's like, ah, ah. ah. And he ran home. We're fucking howling. Oh, no. We're like this poor bastard. <laughs> and I don't know what happened after that. I don't know what the fuck happened after that. <laughs> Man, one time, me and my buddy who went to Grand High School over here, we used to ride our bikes around, and we found this apartment. You know, sometimes the the floor apartments they'll have furnished so they can show people, like before they rent it, so it's always there furnished. We broke in there one time, and we made a, a murder scene. <laughs> We got like, we got like red paint, and made it like blood, and we we put like a note, like like a murder note and shit. And did they buy it? I mean, did we cops? didn't wait around for people. Oh to... no, that's the whole thing. You gotta wait for them to see the cops. You gotta make believe like you're just playing in yeah. the house. We and let them show up and. What? Let's get to the bottom of this. I'm yeah. flabbergasted. And then you go over and tell him fake excuse. I saw a Chinese guy with a bat walking down the block at 2 o'clock. A Chinese guy, he just give him fake information. <laughs> so even though we would do it, we would yeah. wait for the cops to come. And they would go, did you see anything? Oh, yeah. I saw everything. Three fucking Jewish guys. I saw everything. A black car. <laughs> Yarmulke. They were Jewish. Yarmulkes. And the guy would go, look, be on the lookout for a Jew. You know, like, fuck. And it was, it was too hard to believe. Like, <laughs> the guy would believe us and shit. 